my 100th video. If you actually look back at my very first video, it's a dying light funny moments video I made three years ago. So in celebration of this being my 100th video, I thought I'd replay Dying Light and see if I could actually beat it without weapons. After all, Dying Light 2 is supposed to be coming out in 2020 and it was nice to get a little refresher on the whole situation. So, can you beat Dying Light without weapons? I know you have lots of questions like, what about demolishers? How did you kill Tahir? Were there any points where you absolutely had to use a weapon? What did you do for gunfights? Stick around and I'll answer all of those questions. I've made lots of challenge gaming videos over the last five months, and as always, we start with the rules, which in this case are simple. As long as I only use my body as a weapon, I'm good. This means I can punch, kick, drop kick, charge, head stomp, and grapple throw enemies. And these happen to be pretty well the only means of attack I use throughout the playthrough. And of course, I can't use any melee weapons, guns, or throwables, including red propane tanks. Now I do want to say one thing right off the bat. Unfortunately, in the beginning of the game, I was extremely weak and I had to use only my fists and kicks. And if you didn't know, human enemies have a lot of health. So lots of my starting gameplay revolved around me taking a bad guy to the ground and beating the absolute shit out of him. I mean, each bad guy took at least two minutes of constant punching and kicking to the head to kill. It was insanely brutal, and I don't even want to talk about it. Anyway, let's jump into it. We'll skip ahead to my first zombie kill. It wasn't too bad. I dismantled the weapon I had in my hand and just went for the kick. Weirdly, Crane chose to straight leg kick it really awkwardly, but it worked, so I'm not complaining. And you know, it was a really simple first kill. I didn't overexert myself or overdo it or anything. I was ready to go fight the hordes of the undead, but stupid Raheem wanted to see my sick parkour skills. I tried to impress him by doing a 360, but I just landed where I was already standing and then proceeded to accidentally fall in. Oof. So next, Spike asked me to go rig some cars, and this is where I came to my first problem. There were dozens of zombies surrounding the cars. Now, I know what you're thinking. I probably distracted them and pulled them away from the car long enough to rig the traps. First of all, no firecrackers or throwables allowed. I'm literally only allowed to use my body. Secondly, this is me, remember? I dive in head first. So, I jumped down there, no weapons and no hope, and slaughtered every zombie with my bare hands. Honestly, zombies weren't that hard to deal with, and luckily they all have an invisible health bar. So as long as you slowly will down their health, you'll eventually kill them one by one. And here, I came to my first big boy fight. See, on the scale of thickness, we have Raheem, this guy, and this guy. Raheem, meh, he's kind of on the weekend, but he still makes the scale. Then we have the big boy, which is who I'm fighting now, and later, we'll get to talking about the thick boy. Anyway, this big boy took me a good five minutes of constant kicking and punching to kill, which as you'll see is nothing compared to some others. But yeah, he died pretty easily. It's all about whittling down that health, baby. Then we get to the first human I'm tasked with killing in the entire run, and trust me, he isn't the last. Of course, I can't shoot back at him, and I can't throw any bombs or molotovs, which is usually how I get through this part. So, I had to be a little more creative. I ran around the side of his building and luckily found a tall hill that allowed me to jump into his home, giving me the perfect opportunity to attack him. He didn't see it coming in time, and I drop kicked him as hard as I could. As I proceeded to beat the shit out of him, I noticed he was wearing full body armor, so I shifted my strategy and started kicking and punching his unprotected head into the iron bar that was beside it. He died quickly and I couldn't help but dance on his dead corpse. And being Rice's little errand boy, you know I had to go around the settlements and collect their money. Everything was fine, but I noticed Crane was feeling a little bit guilty. Listen to what he had to say. Okay, Kareem, I made the collection at the ferry station, and I'm pretty sure I'm going to hell. Now, a big thing with this run is leveling up. You'll see that some bosses are impossible to defeat without certain skills, so leveling up is important. Agility isn't a problem because I can still do that normally, but combat? Now there's a big oof if I've ever seen one. Each zombie, with fists alone, takes about 30 seconds to a minute to kill, and you get points for each kill, so you can see how it took me a while to level up my combat skills. The four big skills I needed for this run was the drop kick, the head stomp, the charge, and the grapple. As it turns out, the drop kick was the attack I used the most, and it was definitely the most effective. I need you guys to listen very carefully for this next part, okay? Very carefully. It was okay for me to use spiky platforms to kill zombies, and let me tell you why. How is it my fault if they fall into the spiky traps? Huh? 
I just happen to throw a zombie beside me, and it just happens to fall into the spike trap. And I just happen to repeat this process 10 to 20 times in a row. All joking aside, I've already proven I can kill groups of zombies with my bare hands. Traps just made killing them for points faster and easier. I only really used spiky platforms when I was farming for combat points, but like I said, zombies dying this way isn't a big deal. So continuing on our adventure, we arrive at the school with Jade. This is where fighting human enemies really comes into play. I found it was easiest to kill human enemies by grappling them and drop kicking them. Once they were on the ground, I would just go to town until they were dead. It was an extremely painful way every human enemy died. Personally, I enjoyed killing them by punching them in the butt, but after this guy, uh, I don't know how to say it, released the blood from his butt area? You know what, I'll just say it. He was pooing blood. Yeah, that was the last time I killed a guy via butt punches. But you know, sticking to just kicking their heads in for a few minutes at a time was good enough for me anyway. Sometimes the zombies helped me out too, which was sick. Thank you, zombie. Very cool. I escaped the school and I was feeling good. The run was going great so far. Now I thought killing the bolter would be next to impossible without firecrackers. How was I gonna punch it to death? The moment you try to attack it, all of the volatiles in the area go straight for you and destroy you. But my answer to this problem, like all life's problems, was the drop kick. Just remember guys, if you have a problem in life, everything can be solved with a drop kick. And so that's what I did, and to my surprise, the little guy died instantly. By the way, if you guys are enjoying the video, click the like button as it really helps out my channel. Okay guys, listen. I have to say something really important. I think Brecken has a problem. Almost every time I interacted with him, he ended up breaking something. There were cases! I had no choice, I swear. He even broke a TV in my hallucinations. We need to change this. In the comments below, write hashtag save Brecken. Finally, we arrive at the arena and are forced to fight a demolisher, aka the thick boy. I'm gonna kill that motherfucker with my bare hands. Rice, being a little sweetheart, gives us a machete to use. Of course, I scrapped it immediately and went for the big guy head on. At first, I tried punching and kicking him, and you'll notice anytime you're doing damage to an enemy, you get combat and agility points on the top, signaling you're damaging them. But this wasn't happening for me. It wasn't looking good, and I thought I'd have to use the machete. After a bit of messing around, I eventually figured out that the drop kick was damaging his armor, and it was actually the best way to hurt him because anytime I did it, it would stun him. Hell frigging yes. All that was required at this point was patience. And when his thick body hit the floor, I felt the urge to hit a fat dab, but stop myself since it wasn't 2018 anymore. I killed a freaking demolisher with my bare hands. I'm pretty much a god at this point. Some bosses throughout the run are only killable with certain skills. If I didn't have the drop kick at this point in the game, I would have been screwed. It was now time to infiltrate Rice's hideout. My second favorite way of killing people in this game, other than kicking their heads into a brick wall, was to drop kick them off of tall heights. In this case, an 8 story building. Technically, this guy tripped over the ledge himself, so that wasn't really murder. The thirst and bloodlust from missing out on a kill made me totally destroy this next guy, and unfortunately, I had to yeet him over the edge to a slow and painful death. And here, I arrive at the toughest battle I've come to face so far. A garage full of armed soldiers. All I have at my disposal are my drop kicks and my fists, but that hasn't been a problem so far. Here's the great thing about this game. Let's say there's two enemies wanting to kill me and I kill one, but the other guy who survives kills me. When I respawn, the one guy I killed is still dead and there's only the one survivor to deal with. So unless you're fighting a boss, there's almost no penalty to dying other than losing a few points. That's how I took out all large groups of enemies with guns. I'd wait until one brave soul was stupid enough to come at me behind cover, and then I'd drop kick them as hard as I could into the nearest wall. And as the paraplegic was questioning his life choices, I would single him out and beat him to death. Did I say this was a family-friendly channel? Other than the death beatings, my channel is family-friendly, I swear. The last two thugs were a complete nightmare, though. I must have died a dozen times on them because they stuck together and I couldn't single them out, and I was absolutely furious after trying to kill these guys for at least 20 minutes. But, I got my chance, and when I finally singled one of them out, oh, you better believe I made his death slow. The last guy wasn't in luck as I stomped his head into a pile of garbage, right where he belonged. One final man barged through the door and thought he was going to kill me, but after the long and tedious battle I had just gotten over, I was enraged and wasn't taking any bullshit. I hit him with a three-part combo like a goddamn ninja and started kicking his head against the cement wall. 
His face dragged against all of the dirt, grime, and soda cans on the floor, but I just kept going until I had smashed his head enough times to kill him. Yes, it's brutal, and yes, half of the wall was now painted red, but there's not much else I can do in a no weapons challenge. I work with what I've got. Any other gunfights in the rest of the game, I had the stomp head skill, and I'd dropkick one enemy, crush his head, get killed myself, and repeat until all enemies were gone. And then Jade gets kidnapped. Crane goes crazy. Jade? Jade? Are you here? Bruh. And we have our next boss fight. Can you guys guess who the hardest boss to kill in the game was? Was it the big boy? Was it the thick boy? No, it was frigging Tahir. We have tons of mutated zombies, volatiles that want to rip open my stomach, demolishers that want to crush my bones, and then we have Tahir, who's a little bigger than your average Joe. I'm gonna kill that motherfucker with my bare hands. Tahir is insane and he dodges most of your attacks. The only thing I could find that actually hurt him was punching him, but that only did one point of damage per hit, plus it was really dangerous and risky. Plus, every time I died, he got a little bit of his health back. Plus, my attacks barely did any damage to him. And trust me, coming from the guy who did the same boss fight for 9 hours straight in Resident Evil 2, I was willing to punch Tahir to death for hours if I had to, which is what it would have taken. And drop kicks, at least for me, didn't seem to be working. Luckily though, I watched YouTube for help. It was a video of four guys playing on co-op showing that they were slowly killing Tahir, and the guy I was watching was using the charge attack. At this point, I didn't have the charge attack, but it was the next skill in my agility tree and my agility was close to leveling up. So, I kept dodging Tahir's attacks, giving myself agility points until I leveled up. I chose the charge attack and went at it. This attack was better than using my fists, but it still only took off a pixel of health for every couple of successful charges I did. Which, by the way, I started the Tahir fight as a level 12, and I ended it as a level 15 and a half. That's how many times I had to charge and dodge him. I spent an hour and a half on this fight in total, and once I started using the charge attack on him, I never died once. This was one of the most stressful boss fights I've ever done in the game, but after that long hour and a half, the deed was done. I killed a huge, combat-trained man wielding a machete with just my forearms. If that's not badass, I don't know what is. And to go off track a bit, Crane is a goddamn superhuman or something. I was literally at the highest point in all of Haran and threw myself off of the top of it hoping to end my life. But, look at what happened. <coughs> what? There's just no way. I would expect this fall to look more like this. I mean, after Tahir's death, the rest of the game is pretty easy, there's not much to say. The final mission is all about running away from things, and the final fight with Rice prompts the player to press buttons. So yes, you can beat Dying Light without weapons. Finally, a challenge I didn't fail. I feel like I've been failing so many challenges lately. Challenge complete. If you guys enjoyed this video, subscribe to my channel because I make new challenge gaming videos every week, and make sure to click the bell icon or else you pretty well aren't subscribed to me. Just make sure you click that bell. I hope you enjoyed my 100th YouTube video, and here's to many more. Also, are you guys excited for Dying Light 2? Because I sure am. Anyways, thanks for watching, and I'll catch you thick boys in my next video.